Today I'm going to show you how to create a basic Ukrainian Easter egg. This art form goes back hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. We'll use beeswax, dyes, a writing tool, and a basic chicken egg. Before we start on our eggs, we need to clean them. These are just some of the products that different eggers use to, to clean their eggs. Some use water and vinegar. Some use the ivory uh, dish soap. Some use baking soda. Before I start cleaning my egg, I usually put them in to a little tub of water. The reason is I am looking for cracks in the eggs. When you put them in the water, if there are any cracks, they can be seen much better. If you look, you can see in this here area, there's tiny little fracture looking lines. This egg would not be a good egg to work on. Getting ready to clean my egg, I have uh, two little uh, plastic tubs here, one with water and one of your choice of cleaners like soap. They only take a few seconds just to, to get the egg wet. You see the foaming of the solution here and this is eating off this cuticle on the egg and any other um, gunk that might be on here. The chicken eggs don't take long to clean and then I immediately rinse. Dry your egg with a paper towel and you are ready to begin the next step. No, this is not part of my design, but what I'm doing is taking my pencil and just drawing on the paper here. This is a method used to find bottom of your egg for your drain hole. You can either use pencil and you would take your egg and keep it upright and just go back and forth. You can take a piece of carbon paper and go back and forth. Other people use what they have on hand, their morning newspaper, and just go back and forth. Now you can see where you need to make your drain hole. Now that we have our marking for our drain hole, I wanted to show you some of the items that are used to make this drain hole. We have the blast fix, and as you can see, it's a gadget with bellows and and a rod that goes up in the egg. But first, we would take this gadget and poke it through the egg and grind it a little bit, and that would make our hole. After we have our hole, here's another gadget we could use. And with this one here, you put your mouth on the tip here and you blow air and insert the metal rod up in the hole here and then the egg would come out. One that I use for many years is this one. And again you would take this little sharp nail part and ram it in the egg and poke the hole and grind it and make the hole as big as you would like it. How I do mine, I have a high speed handpiece drill. I make my holes by using the drill. Some people use uh, dremels. Then other people don't drain the egg at all. They leave the egg whole and they work with a whole egg and later on they may drain the egg by using these methods. Now I'm going to show you the tool that I use. This is a small air compressor. Many people use aquarium pumps after the hole is uh, drilled. Then I will pump air into the eggshell. Here you'll see I have set up two containers. This one here has water so we can clean our egg. This one here is just a container. I tried to put my um, egg yolk inside the plastic bag and just seal it up and be done with it. Another tool that I wanted to mention is a water pick. Some people use water picks, the electric water picks, to also clean their eggs, drain them, and clean them 
at the same time. Very useful tool is a stretched out paper clip. What we will do with the paper clip is we will stir or break up the yolk inside the egg with it. I'm not putting my tool inside the egg, but on the side of the drain hole. This way here, the air can get inside. Another tool that I keep on hand is this um, monojet. What I use it for is to clean out the inside of my eggshell. I just squirt clean water, or I can go ahead and make a solution with baking soda or soap or whatever. I can shake my egg up, shake the water all inside, or I can just um, leave the egg inside uh, the water and let it sit there for a while. And sometimes this may take a couple tr uh, tries to make sure the egg is completely clean. When this is all done, I do let my egg sit out for a while. I may even wick it. How we wick it is to take a piece of... Um, toweling or uh, tissue and we put it up in the drain hole. Let's see if I can pull off a piece here. We would actually use a little bit larger piece and we just put it up in the drain hole like this, set the egg up and let it drain. Now it's time to measure our egg out for our designs. Some people use different methods they can take an elastic band or a rubber band, tape measure, some use lathes, but I like to use, this is a mechanical pencil, you can use a regular pencil, but I find that mechanical pencils, the lines are thinner, and I do like the little bit thinner lines. I start off with just one line. I can either choose to use my tape measure or because I don't like to deal with numbers, I can take a piece of quilling paper, just a strip, lay it against that line I just drew. I will wrap it around the egg just like this and I can either bend it right in that where it touches the line again, or I can make a line on the strip of paper. Now I take my strip of paper and I take the end and put it right where I made that, that little mark on my piece of paper. I will hold it there and then squish those two sides together until I have a bend in my quilling paper. I will take my pencil and mark that bend. Now I will lay it right back on the egg and again, right against that mark I made. Wrap it around. This time we won't go completely around. We're only gonna go halfway around and the mark that we just made, will let us know exactly where halfway around is. So now I will make another mark. Right here. Again, I will do the same thing. Set my egg down. Take my strip of paper. 
and where I made that bend there. Now I will take the end, match it up to that mark on the paper. Here we have that loop. Squish it together. We have a, another bend. Mark that bend. Take my egg. Now I have two lines. One on one side and one on the other. What I'm going to do is make marks right in the middle on each side that doesn't have the lines. So here we go. Line it up. Lay it down. Make our mark. This time here, we're going to turn the egg over. So we have the first mark, the second mark, the third mark, but we need the fourth mark. And this is how we do this. Again, we find the line, lay the paper down, and here's our fourth mark. From here, we will take our marks and extend them from one end to the other. Turn the egg, find another mark, again extend up and down. Here's our third mark. And here's our fourth mark. On the fourth mark, I'm going to continue extending all the way around. I will do the same with these two lines. Now we've got our crisscross at the top. Let's turn the egg over. And get our lines matched up. By extending these lines. Now our egg is divided. Next thing I want to do is find the center. To do that, again, I will take my strip of paper, but this time I will start at this crisscross mark. Either way, either one, just make sure I lay it down right where the crisscross meets. Wrap the paper down the egg until I come to the bottom crisscross. Again, here I will mark my paper. I will take the paper, bend it in half. Matching that end up with that mark. Squeeze. Mark where it bends. Take my egg and at the top again, lay my paper down. Roll it down. Now I have a halfway marking. And I will start marking my egg. All I need to do here to continue is just keep walking my uh, paper around 
the egg have to make sure that we we uh, get the uh, lay the paper on the crisscross marks And this is our base lines. This is exactly how we do all of our base lines for nearly all of our uh, eggs. And here we will just take our pencil and fill in, make a continuous line. Now we have all of our sections. The next thing I want to do for this beginner egg, and this is a hard one, I want to draw a circle. Right there. I'm going to turn the egg over to the other side and draw another circle. Right there. To continue, I will now eyeball the distance from the crisscross and my circle and take this line. But now, what I'm going to do is at the halfway mark, I'm going to make a curly cue. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to figure out the distance from this crisscross and the circle. I'm going to take my pencil, run it up, and make a curly cue. We will do this on both sides. Next, I'm going to make what I call a half heart. And I'm going to join it to my curly cue. I will do this on all four on this side and all four on the other side. I have space here. I can either decide to make another long curly cue or I can decide to make leaves in this area. But this time here, I think I will just make a curly cue. In between. these flower petals. We use beeswax to write our designs. As you can see, the beeswax is, is this yellow color, or you can buy from many of the different suppliers. We write our designs on the eggs with a tool called a kiska. There are several different types of tools available on the market today, but these are my first ones. This is a traditional kiska made with metal and wood. 
These are the least expensive ones and needs to be heated in a candle flame to get it nice and hot to melt the beeswax. When we hold it, we put the funnel near the flame. We don't put the wood part in the flame, but just the metal part. We're just trying to get this very hot. This is an almost electric kiska, which is heated in a candle flame, just like the traditional one. And this one here retains the heat much longer. With both my traditional and my almost electric kiska, I will hold the kiska near the flame to make sure that it becomes quite hot. And then I can scoop my beeswax. Check and make sure that we're hot. And then I can start applying wax. Then, of course, we have our electric kiska, and this will be the one that we will be using for this egg. The electric kiska is more expensive, but it is powered by electricity and remains constantly hot. I now want to show you how I uh, fill my funnel up in the kiska with the wax. I can take the kiska or my tool and just lay it against the wax and because it's hot it melts the wax inside the little funnel part. It's best not to take your wax and try and force it into, let it just melt into the funnel. Many people use spaghetti wax or they will make little pellets with their wax and just take the little pellets and drop it into uh, the funnel part. Here I have a little warming plate and with this I can take a metal tin and set it on this warming plate, turn it on, take some of my wax that I made and melt it and I can use hot melted wax this way. This is my La Petite melting pot. This is how I melt my wax and when I'm working on my eggs I will just take the tip of my kiska and dip it into the melted wax. I will always wipe off just the outside and now it will it's time to begin on my egg. Before I start on my egg, there are two things that I do. And one is to make sure I won't have any drips by wiping on a tissue. The next one is I check to see if the flow of my wax is coming out of the tip of my tool. I hold my egg, I get comfortable with my egg, I get comfortable with holding my kiska, and then I begin. I go a little slow. This way here I am making sure that the wax is sticking on the eggshell. And I try to make as long a lines as I can so that we're not making choppy lines. To make the circles better, many times it's it's 
good if you can try and turn the egg as you're working. Each of us has to find out what works for us, which is the best way for us to do each and every step with working on the eggs and using the tools and, and the products. While you're working on the egg and you're covering your uh, pencil lines, your guidelines, if for some reason you didn't like the shape or, or anything about the, the lines themselves, this is a time that you can correct the straightness or the curve well, I will continue with my waxing. Just a tip. If at any time you see that your lines are not straight, you can fix that by either making little tick marks or little dots. But if you're going to make something to look like little dots. To do this so that they really look like dots, make little circles. Don't just go dot, dot, dot. What happens is you get little slash lines and, and they're all different sizes where if you're making the circle motion, you get more of a uniform look. So at any time, you find that your lines are kind of wavy or crooked, you can change that look by adding the dots or little tick marks. It, for many times, it, it makes a prettier design. And many folks even thinks it makes it look more intricate. So just circle motions to make dots. Now that we've waxed in all the areas that we want white, we need to take a look at the egg and see that we have all the areas. Sometimes we get distracted and we miss a spot. But before we put the egg in the dye, this is the time to look it over and make sure we got it all. Let's think about plugging that drain hole that we made. We can purchase drain hole plugs from the same places that we get our dyes and our waxes. Or you can go on eBay and purchase them there. Or, you can do it the old-fashioned way, plugging your egg with 
wax from your Kiska. You can start building by going around and around or many times we have drops of the wax that we can use. We can place one of those drops there, mash it down. We would take our key scut to seal it We'd go around it to seal it. When we're done with sealing our uh, drain hole, before we put the egg into the dye, I like to take a little bit of vinegar this is my squirt bottle of vinegar and just wet the egg. You can let it uh, sit in a little uh, bowl of uh, vinegar for a while if that's what you'd like. Some people just take the egg from this point and put it in their dyes. Others will let the egg dry before they put it in their dyes. We will stir in dye into our boiling water and then we will add a tablespoon of vinegar. Now we're ready to put our egg in the first dye. I am going to use a wide mouth mason jar. Some artists just put their eggs in and roll them. Others will weigh them down and then they can walk away. However, there is another technique that I like to use and that one is to put the egg into a baggie with the dye. After putting the egg into the baggie, I squeeze out all the air that I can from the baggie. I give the baggie a twist. And I just swish the egg around. I can walk around, answer the phone, do a chore or two if necessary, depending on how bright or how intense you want your uh, dye color to come out is how long you would keep it in the dye. Now this egg has taken the dye very nicely so I can remove this egg at this time. When we take the egg out of our dye and it's time to dry it. All we want to do is pat the egg dry. We don't want to rub it. You take the chance of rubbing your dyes off doing that. Now that our egg is dry, it's time to begin waxing all the areas that I want to remain yellow. I'm ready to begin with continuing my design on, on this egg, but I'll be sealing in all the yellow areas because the egg is now dyed yellow. Make sure the flow of my wax is working. I like to outline my work, so I try to follow my first line I made. in each petal. I'm 
and these lines will be yellow. I've also been thinking that in on the sides here, I would like to put some leaves. So I will start right at the drain hole on the bottom and just make a wavy line in. This will be a wavy yellow line. And now we're going to repeat the same dyeing process, but this time we're going to put the egg in an orange dye. Before I dyed my egg uh, orange, I put some little netting marks in the circle. So those netting marks will be yellow also. And as you can see, I'm going to work on orange and I drew in just a little bit of a flower or petals on the inside of this petal here. Something I did forget to tell you is at the beginning or when your color is a your egg is a light color, usually on the bottom it's a good place to put your signature or your logo. I'm some people like to even date the eggs. So I'm going to just put my initials at the bottom. And now I will start applying wax to the area that I want to remain orange. I will do this on this side of the egg and also on the other side. However, you don't have to. You can change your design on the other side altogether and have a totally different look. I did finish all the orange, waxing in the orange, and I also decided to do a different design on this side. Now I want to put my egg in green dye. However, I don't want to uh, put it in the green dye while it's still orange. So what I will do now I have two tubs here of water. I am going to use ivory dish soap and just squirt a little bit on my egg. We're going to wash this, this color off. It'll take off the yellow and the orange and it'll bring it back to the white.
Sometimes it doesn't come off with the first uh, cleaning. So we can either leave the egg in the water, soapy water, or give it another squirt of uh, the ivory. Now we have the dye off, but what we need to do is get the soap off, so we'll put it in a clean tub of water. Now we have removed all the yellow and all the orange dye. Again, this here is a very good time to look over your artwork. Make sure that all the wax is still on in all the areas that you want it to be. If not, apply the wax where it should be. Okay, time to get ready for my green dye. Here we have the egg is green and most of the waxing of the green area is done. I did want to point out that on your drain hoe, you can incorporate your design around that drain hoe. Ooh, there's my green leaves. Another thing I wanted to point out is that when you're waxing, a lot of times beginners have a problem with um, scratchy lines or um, different colors showing up in, in areas that, that it shouldn't be. What I have found to be the best is to, when applying the wax between the lines, Go in circles. It takes a little bit more time and the wax seems to spread out more than if you're just going back and forth. Since I've started doing this, I rarely have any scratchy lines. My next step will be to take the green dye off because my next color is going to be red and of course I don't want to put red over the green dye so I will take the ivory soap wash the the green off before I put it into the red dye I will give it a squirt of the vinegar I finished all the waxing of the red However, I decided to use a lighter red and a darker red. Now my next color will be my final color and it's black. It's not necessary to clean the red off. I can just put the egg into the black dye. Squeeze out as much air as possible. Give the bag a twist and just let the dye do its job. The final dye, which was black, has been done. Now it's time to remove the wax. But before we do that, we need to unplug the drain hole. I just use a toothpick and gently poke a hole in the wax that'll make an opening. The reason is we need to open this uh, up because I will be using a um, heating tool to remove my wax. Some people use mineral spirits and this works very well. Others use their oven. It doesn't matter which method you use. It's important to get a good hold of your egg while you're doing this. Okay, here we go.
and you gently wipe off. Many people, before they remove the wax, they will also put a dab of olive oil in their hand and roll the egg in their hand. It helps remove the wax. The wax is coming off very nicely. There's our orange and our red and our green and our dots. Let's turn over and see the other side. Oop, there's our leaves. And here's our other side with a complete different view. Our next step will be to varnish the egg. Many artists, before they put varnish on the egg, they may spray their egg with this type of a spray. It helps keep the dyes from fading. It doesn't matter what brand name varnish you use. The most important thing is that it's oil base. The water base varnish will just remove all of your artwork. I'm applying the varnish to the egg. And now I will let it sit and dry overnight. Now I have varnish on my hands. I have found that using either oil or hand lotion will remove the varnish. Tomorrow our egg will have a nice shine as you see with this one. We have our leaves, our design, our polka dots, a beautiful egg.